Right, welcome back everybody. This is part two on this Ford Mondeo. What we're doing today is we're going to be removing the gearbox to have a look inside there and have a look at the, what's it called? Concentric slave cylinder. One of them. So what we've got to do first is we've got to drop the subframe. So we're going to get the car in the air, get them uh, subframe bolts dropped down. We're not going to try and remove it fully, are we? What? The subframe, we're just going to try and swing it down. Well, we're hoping to drop down the, the subframe on this side, but we've disconnected the steering column bolt which goes through the pinch bolt through underneath the foot the, in the footwell. Um, we're going to undo the subframe bolts fully on this side, there's two big ones there. The ones on the other side we're just going to loosen, hopefully we'll get the pivot on that as well. But before we do that we've got to take out things like the airbox, the battery tray, a few ancillary plugs and things at the front here. So you'll probably be on a bit of time lapse for that and we'll see you in a minute. Right, so as you probably saw, we got the car up in the air now. Uh, he did rush me above my steps because there is the steps what you've got to do in the engine bay first. Oh, above your steps. Hence the steps here, right? So what we've actually done here is obviously the battery come out the last time. The air box just pulls out. And we've undone the clip there. And we've got the two cables for the gear selector mechanism, which are down here. One sits on top and one lower down is fixes on the side. And the way you disconnect them is you push the button in, in the middle there and lift up. They can be a bit tight, so give them a squirt of WD-40 first. And then you've got this little mechanism down here, which fit into a bracket, and you have to rotate this black front bit clockwise. Now, if you look in the manual, or the, the Haynes manual which I got, it says rotate this anti-clockwise. When I'd done uh, my Mondo six years ago, and it took, took me an hour to sort that one out where you actually have to rotate, it, rotate this thing clockwise. When you rotate that clockwise, these two yellow pins allow this to pull out of the bracket there. As you can see, they come backwards and that leaves the cable just floating. That one there is exactly the same. Again, a little bit awkward to push in and pull backwards at the same time. A squirt of WD-40 does help. And the way I got over it was just to wedge a screwdriver down this side so that when you push in, in the button, you can just wedge that away like that and that will help pop that off. That's the two gear cable disconnected. So coming around there, what we've got to get to is the bell housing bolts, which live behind this pipe cluster there, and also down the back there. So um, again, that's just something you've got to move out of the way, depending on what engine you've got. I did this last time on a diesel, and there was a few more pipes here to remove. So um, we're just going to go around now and just pull out connectors and things just to give us proper access. There will be some more stuff underneath to do. We've got the rear gearbox mount to take out. As you can see there, we've actually double axle standed the car. We've got it right up in the air now because we're going to need to gain access to the uh, subframe bolts, which are the back ones are here. The front ones are obviously at the front. These two are going to come straight out on the passenger side and the ones on the other side, we're just going to loosen. So hopefully that'll give us the angle. We need to drop the subframe down this side to enable us to at least maneuver it out. If not, we don't, we don't probably hopefully need to take it right the way out. So coming through under the wheel arch, we've got the drive shaft, which goes into the gearbox, which we're gonna to have to pull out. We'll have to um, disconnect the drop link there because that's connected to the anti-roll bar. 
which is connected to the rear subframe. So when we drop this down, that joint needs to be separated. There's the steering rack there, which we're going to probably undo as well, just to crack that joint now. And then we'll pull the drive shaft out of the gearbox. We'll have to probably undo the big nut in the middle there, just to swing this out of the way. And we'll also have to do a similar thing on the other side as well. Right, so what we've done here, we've disconnected the clutch reservoir line just by pulling that clip up and then that pulls the hose off of the uh, slave cylinder we've got two bolts to undo here these are basically earth bolts that bolt into the um, onto the bell housing so we're, we're just undoing that 10 mil nut now and down the side here there's a metal bracket that basically holds your wiring looms in place they've got two 10 mils one at the top and one which you get from underneath and it just pulls that uh, bracket away from the bell housing as you can see there so that's where we're up to so far so we'll just undo these two earth cables that mount to this 13 mil headed bolt on the bell housing so as you can see there they've got one earth there and another smaller earth there as well. I'll put that bolt back in just so that we know where it comes from. There we go. Just keep that out of the way down there. Not forgetting obviously to put that back on. Right, so that's that. There's a little cable tie in here that is you probably want to leave that off, it has actually broke off. It's a little plastic clip that pokes into a hole there. Just leave that forward and that releases the loom from the bell housing as well there. So all we're left with now, you can't see it here, but around the top, all around the bell housing, you've got the uh, bolts to undo. But we're not going to do them yet. We're going to go underneath the car now. Don't forget, we've still got the gearbox mount there, which is holding the engine up. Um, I have, there's two ways of doing this. You can get an engine support bar, which you can put along the top and just hold the engine from above or some people get a big trolley jack underneath and hold the engine from below because you're going to need to drop the engine this side so that you can withdraw the gearbox so we're going to we're going to use one of them two methods not too sure yet but we're going to go underneath the car now we're going to take off the back engine mount off we're going to start to undo the subframe bolts and we're going to separate the drive shaft hubs from each of the front wheels and we may have to empty the gearbox of oil because we don't want that spilling out all over the place. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, so this is our rear engine mount. So we're just going to undo it from here and hopefully just swivel it out of the way. They're normally pretty tight, these folks. This is a 15 mil. There we go. Once we get it moving, we'll be okay. <laughs> Right, that's that one folks, so hopefully, there we go. Right, that's the rear mount out, and as you can see the engine is now rocking. I'm hoping we don't have to disturb our exhaust manifold. But while we're undoing all this, this is the drive shaft for the driver's side, so you've got this centre bearing here to undo, so while we're under here, we'll undo these two 13mm nuts that re removes the front of the uh, carrier and then that means we can pop the drive shaft out when we come to undo the ends of it so i'm going to do that now there we go that will allow the bearing now to come out no problem we're going to take the gearbox all out now and we'll see you in a minute right so this is where we're going to be draining the gearbox oil from folks it's right near the back engine mount as you can see or the gearbox mount if you want to call it that and it's an eight mil so i'm just going to place that in there and i've got a breaker bar here so I'm just going to whack that in there, there we go, and just give it a pull, just to crack the engine, crack the engine, just to crack the nut, there we go, there we go, right so Gary's going to go and get the bucket now, yeah look he's, he's right on the edge look he ain't doing nothing look, hey, unbelievable, so this is the underside of it folks, it's done 37,000 miles, this car. It's not in bad, Nick. Alright, 
what buckets you got me here? Look, I think I must have old bucket here, look. That's when I was doing the butchery trade. Right, okay, so we put it underneath there. You hold that. Okay. I'll get my tool out. Unbelievable. Right, so let's get my tool in at a different angle. Now we may or may not get stuff out here, folks, I'm not sure, so we'll play it for you. There we go. Was it clean? Looks clean, isn't it? Yeah, it looks lovely and clean. It's not done many miles, I wouldn't have thought. Right, so we'll drain that out. Let that drain out, folks. And then we'll proceed to uh, get the drive shafts out. And one thing they always say is, is um, before you drain a gearbox, ensure that your fill plug is accessible and you can get to it, and it does undo. Otherwise... You could be in all sorts of trouble that you can't fill your gearbox back up with oil if you drain it out. Just a little tip for you there, folks. Right, so we've just got to take this front lower crap tray down because that's bolted to the front of our subframe. So these are T30 bolts. And I should have bloody goggles on under here. Right, so that's that. So these little clips here, they should just pull out of them, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should drop down there. Yeah. Come over this side so I don't get no crap in my eyes. There we go. No crap on there, boy. And there we go, folks. So we've got two little, I think they're eight mils, that come off of the radiator mounting bracket. So you want to hang your radiator up as well. So uh, we'll do that. We'll undo these two bolts there and these two bolts there. And I don't think there's any wiring looms here. Yes, there is. It's just a matter of releasing the little rubber plug and then ping out that little clip that holds on to the top there. I think that's the only one there. But do check with your, if you've got a diesel or whatever. I think when I had the diesel, there was a few more along there. So uh, that's the only thing that's on there now. So we're just going to hang the um, radiator bracket up with some clips, some cable ties above. And then we'll undo them four bolts and that gives the front of the radiator, at the front of the um, subframe will be free then so we're going to do that now and as you can see that's the uh lower mount in fact the radiator might actually stay in place so we haven't uh, tied it up yet so that's the first bracket off so that's the two brackets off there that means the subframe at the front is now clear we've got the two drive shafts to take out and then we can drop the uh, subframe mounting brackets one at the front here and one at the back there where the jack is we take them ones right out on this side, on the passenger side, and the ones on the driver's side, we'll loosen them about three quarters of the way, so that means we can drop this subframe quite a bit down. We've then got to support the engine. We'll undo the gearbox mounting bolt, and we'll start to lower the engine down on the trolley jack, which will be mounted here on some wood. You can either have the engine bracket at the top, as I said to you earlier on, but um, I think we're going to go with the trolley jack method. Right, so as we've got the car jacked up in the air, we're going to undo the uh, hub nut now on the uh, driver, uh, passenger side. So I'm going to put that on there like that. And obviously we've got no brakes now. So if we just get a screwdriver in the ventilated discs, put it in the top of the ventilated discs. And then as you can see, when I go downwards to undo, that locks the disc in place and enables me to do that. Now, don't try and little tip for doing undoing things like this when the car's on the jack. Don't undo it by lifting up because you're taking the weight off the jack and it could roll off. So whenever you're undoing a tight nut like this, always push down on it as opposed to lifting up because you could pull the car off the jack. Right, here we go. They're normally quite tight, these. There we go. Once you've normally cracked it, it's normally all right. They're pretty tight, these bolts, so uh, just be aware. I'll finish that off now with the impact wrench. There we go. And that's our drive shaft nut undone. Right, so we just undone the pinch bolt there for the bottom ball joint. That's an 18 mil there, quite a pig to get out. So we took the nut off that side and then we drifted that out with a punch. And we got that out. And then we got our big metal bar, stuck it through there, wasted it under the bodywork. Gary stood on it and I just hit the bar down with a club hammer. Show him the bar over there. 
and that's how we got the drive shot. That's how we got the bottom ball joint out. So I'm just going to drift out this middle nut now, which we undone earlier on, just to take the uh, drive shaft out. We can, we could take it out from the other side and just leave it hanging here, but it will be in the way. So I prefer to take this and get it right out of the way. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm just widening the nut back on, just so I can just give it a clonk with a club hammer, just to free it up. Right, so let's undo that. Again, this has probably never been out, so that's why it's extra tight. Okay. Yep. I've got it moving, so. Yeah. Right, there we go. A bit more. That's on the bounce now. So, we come here, we should better pull that drive shaft right out now. And there we go, and as you can see there, look. You see the rusty splines on there, look. Yeah. There we go, that's the first one out, folks. That's a 21 mil socket. So, just take these 10 mils out. Hold this bracket on. If this is man enough. Now, on, the, on my mom though, the last time I've done this one, they got a capsulated nut inside the car under the floor, and mine just span. And I had to cut this bolt out and re weld a new nut in there. But lucky enough, this one's all right. Now, again, we haven't done any of the uh, bell hours in bolts yet, we'll do them in a second. But uh, I'm going to go around the other side now. So let's wipe that in under there. That go under the car. Yeah. Bodywork. Right, so I'll get Gary just to stand on there and I'll hit down on there. You push down on that. One. Two. That's got it. There you go, folks. Right. Yep. Hold on. Just down again. That's it. Out. That's it. That's out. Ah, oh, there you go. You try doing that on your own without a big breaker bar in there. All right. So as that bearing cover removed earlier on, if I can just give that a wiggle now, look. You should be able to pull the drive shaft out from that end. The gearbox will pull away from that no problem. So we can just leave that like that. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do now is go around under all these gearbox bolts all the way around leaving two in the top because we've still got the engine to support below and we're going to do that with the axle uh, the trolley jack and then we'll remove the top gearbox mount and that means all the weight will be on the trolley jack here and then we'll lower the engine down here after we've undone these subframe bolts so we'll just leave this side for the moment and we're going to go around and undo all the low gear, uh, bell housing bolts. So we're going to do that now. Right, so we've taken all the lower gearbox 13mm bolts out now. And we've just got the top ones to do. But we're going to take the gearbox mount bracket out now. Because we've got the uh, engine held up with the trolley jack and a couple of bits of wood. So let's get this out. There's nothing up. That's our brake pipe, which we've held up in the air there. We're just keeping that higher than the cylinder so that it doesn't lose all its fluid. That's a 21 mil, folks. And the engine just dropped there, did you see that? Yep. So we're now fully on our trolley jack. We also need to take this bracket out as well to make life a lot easier and that's bolted again down to the uh, top of the gearbox. We should be able to take that um, engine mounting completely out of the way and it will just make life a lot easier when moving the gearbox about. And as you can see down there we've disconnected also the um, gearbox reverse light switch plug and there's also seeds down there, seed pods, 
which means that he's had mice in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all we've got to do now is undo the last few bolts along the top. The engine's now supported on the uh, trolley jack, and hopefully we can separate the gearbox and hopefully find out what our problem is. Right. So all the bell housing bolts are now out. We're on this. We're on the um, trolley jack, as you can see. I'm going to just ask Gary to let that jack down a little bit so we can tip the engine forward so that the top of the gearbox will clear that um, uh, chassis rail up there, as you can see. Keep going. Anything look like it's going to catch, no? Can't see nothing. No, there. keep coming. Keep coming. Can you just stop for a minute? Yeah. Can you just have a look inside the car and make sure you're steering... <coughs> Thing has come through the floor. Yeah, that's all right then. Okay. So we'll just bring this down a little bit more, folks. On the trolley jack. Yeah, have a look. Have a look at the back of the engine. See if everything seems to be coming down. Everything seems. Free. Right. Okay. A little bit more down then. Probably about there. Just stop it there then. Okay. I'm going to try and manhandle that gearbox out now. I don't know there's a clip there. There's a what? Oh, was a little clip in that cable there, isn't there? Yeah. There we go. Just a little plastic clip there, folks. Is that out? That one's off. Right. Now, just try and give the... Li Can you lift the gearbox there? I just want to see if it separates. So you get a little gap there. No? no? Still feels tight, does it? Yeah. Right, okay. Leave it there for a minute. Yeah. Right, we'll just have a little wiggle, folks. We'll come back to you in a second. Okay, folks, there we go. That is our concentric <laughs> slave cylinder. We've left the gearbox sitting in situ there, because if we had to change the clutch, you could do a clutch from there as well. So you don't need to take the gearbox completely out. So what we've got to decide now is, was this the problem, or is there an issue with these clutch fingers because what was happening was that this bearing wasn't coming forward enough to press onto those fingers to release the clutch so I think we've just located our problem so as you can see all the fingers are not sitting square in the same place so in actual fact that the clutch pressure plate seems to have failed that's where they should be sticking out like that, but a lot of them are right in. So this is actually fouled, which means the clutch has got to come off. Well, it'll have to probably have a new clutch kit on it, won't it? Yeah, it'll have a clutch kit, won't it? So we're not going to do nothing more, but we're going to take the whole lot out and change the whole clutch. So we'll get this out now, because that's obviously the problem. And I think with a new clutch kit, you get a new concentric slave cylinder as well. So that's our problem, folks. Can you see how some are in and some are out? Look. That's our problem. So it wasn't the hydraulics because that did seem to be working fine. We saw that thing working, but it, it wasn't making contact with these because the springs on the, uh, or the fingers, shall we say, on the clutch pressure plate have basically failed. Okay, folks. Oh, look at that. Oh, the hell. There you go, folks. It's even worse than we thought. The clutch has totally disintegrated, look. All the, look at it, look on the floor there, look. That's the reason why it's, uh, it wasn't pushing far enough because all the contact material had disappeared, look. Wow, I've never seen that before. It's that bloody mouse. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Flywheel looks to be okay. Up there. So let's get this clutch and the pressure plate out and have a closer look at it. So there you go, folks. This is totally disintegrated, look. That's the remainders of the plate. Look, I've never seen that before. Not in such a low mileage car anyway. Bearing in mind it's been standing for a while. But the fingers, in actual fact, they've popped out now. They have popped out, yeah. They've come out now. They put, now that clutch is out, they've popped out. Because some, I know, some of them are still in. But you get a new pressure plate, and this is a luck. As you can see there, look, it is a luck flywheel on the pressure plate, or clutch system rather. So there you go. It needs a new clutch. So it turns out it wasn't the hydraulic system, but we had to take the gearbox to find that out. So it's up to Gary now to buy his missus a new clutch and then we can put it back together. 
and we'll see you a bit later on. So there you go, one side of the clutch still had its material fitted, turn it over to the other side, everything's disappeared, all gone. And you know what? There's going to be a part three to this video, because you've got to go and order the clutch. And you know what else? Go on. Look how clean my hands are. <laughs> Who's been doing the work? Sharon, look. Look, look at his hands, Sharon. Story. He could have yeah. cut the grass while I've been there. He could have done other jobs. Unbelievable. So it's gonna... your birthday tomorrow, people. That'd oh. be the 28th. My What's... birthday, yeah. yeah. You know what you're getting? Clutch kit. Clutch kit. So, until next time, we'll see you about.